Hello, let's look at the treatment of heart failure and we will divide them into different tre treatment groups, I mean medication groups. Today we'll only focus on diuretics. That is actually one of the most important medication in heart failure. That is one medication that we will use for all patients of heart failure, regardless of which type of heart failure we have. Because other med medications are, can be depend on which type of heart failure we have. As we said, we have, for example, heart failure with reduced ejection fraction. That means that we have uh, less ejection fraction than 40%. Or we have those with preserved ejection fraction, which means that we have more, more than 50% and so on. And that, that means that uh, diuretics are used for all the groups, for both of these cases, because we suddenly can decrease the peripheral edema seen in a patient with heart failure, because peripheral heart, uh, heart failure will cause edema on, in your legs or, or can cause a lot of um, congestion for example, liver, liver congestion or pulmonary edema. So, and therefore diuretics are medications that will flush out the water through, the, through your kidneys. And therefore you will flush out this water. It will take the water from your legs, peripheral edema, and then flush it out. And therefore you will not have this high amount of edema and uh, severe symptoms that you get from heart failures. So therefore diuretics are very important to use. And what do we have? Loop diuretics is one of the most important to use here. Loop diuretics like furosemide. There exists many types of loop diuretics but I would consider furosemide to be the one that, that is used mostly in hospitals. Furosemide 40 milligram that is a standard thing that you will see in hospitals. You have, of course also have other bumetanid or you have corsemid. These are also good. They are, they are actually better. They have a better bioavailability, it's called. They are absorbed better than furosemid. But the, the furosemid is the standard, okay? We will always start with the low dose of furosemid. That is always uh, true for the other medications also in heart failure medications. Always start with the lowest dose, okay? And then you go, go, go up the ladder. Start with 40 milligram first mid. You can start with 20 also, 20 milligram. That's the absolute lowest. But the standard is 40 milligram. You start with 40 milligram and then uh, you continuously increase the dose until you reach a state where you don't have any weight changes of the patient. The patient should be weighed in the hospital every day maybe three times a day actually. So it's better to uh, measure, measure the weight often. And then you can see when the weight of the patient gets stable because the weight fluctuates because of the water content. Because when the pump, uh, edema in, in the legs accumulate, then the patient gets, uh, gets a higher weight. And therefore you give this furosemide and then you flush out a lot of water and then the weight drops again. So the patient should do this at home also. The patient should take a piece of paper or a calendar and please write down all the uh, weight uh, changes that he, he sees. And this should be documented for every day. And then when he meets the family doctor, then he can show the family doctor how the dose of the diuretic, this loop diuretic, this furosemide changed the weight because if the he see that the weight starts to increase then he starts to increase the dose of the furosemide and opposite if the weight is suddenly dropping then you need to reduce the furosemide a little bit and if the patient is really educated the family doctor have showed how this works have educated the patient then he can do this at home alone of course this 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 means that the patient is not dement he is not having dementia. That means that he is totally functioning good mentally. He has a high compliance, we call it. That means he is following the rules uh, of, the, of the family doctor. If this is the case, then he can do it at home. Otherwise, please go to the family doctor regularly. And please, if you see any sudden increases in weight, I mean four or five kilograms of just uh, increase, then you re need to call your doctor quickly and you need to go to the uh, doctor's office. Please never forget that. Go to the doctor's office if you see an increase in sudden weight. Good. What dose did we say? 40 milligram uh, orally tablet form once a day. But 
the dose will be increased, for example, every week or every two weeks until we reach a target dose, as we said, that is stable. So whenever we see that this dose that the patient is taking regularly every day, that makes the level of the weight stable. That is the target dose. And the maximum dose is what we're talking about is actually 120 milligram of furosemide twice a day. That's actually 250 milligram of furosemide. That's the absolute highest. And, and, and we don't want to reach so high levels. Because if we reach so high levels, then, it, then, then we need to reconsider everything. Uh, this, is, this, is, this is too high. So usually the target dose uh, reaches earlier than that. Okay, otherwise we need to get this patient into the hospital. Good. Also, infusions can be given. And the infusions that we can see are, for example, 5 to 10 milligram every hour in the hospital. And before you start any infusion, that infusion means that you are uh, giving medications in a vein, not orally. And this means that you get a peripheral line here and we will give five milligram an hour in the beginning. But before you start any infusion, you first give a bolus of 40 milligram of uh, furosemide. Always bolus means that you have a syringe and you, and you you give 40 milligram directly into the quickly, not in one hour. And then you, 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 you give this slow infusion of five milligram per hour, and you, you can increase that to 10 milligram per hour if, if, if needed. Good. First, I, mean, I, I will not, the, the, there can be a lot of more information about first, I mean, it can be a lot of more information about diuretics, but here. In these presentations, in, the, in these videos, I'm trying to give the most high yield information, the most important information. And you can read about more advanced things or more deeper things uh, on your own. But the, important, the most important thing needs to be remembered. Furosemide is a loop diuretic that is used for all patients of heart failure. 40 milligram or 20 milligram is the initial doses. And then you increase it weekly and you will reach the target dose when the weight is balanced of the patient and the 250 milligram is a maximum daily dose here 120 milligram twice a day and of course we have other uh, diuretics this was only loop diuretic uh, and in loop diuretics we also said we have a bumetanid and this torsemid that can be used these have other doses i'm not I'm not discussing that, you can check that out. And uh, diuretics can also be tiazide diuretics, but usually tiazide diuretics are not used in heart failure. But, but, big but, if we have hypertension or another disease that requires tiazide diuretics, then you can use tiazide diuretic together with loop diuretics. But of course, then you need to decrease the dose of the loop diuretic. You cannot give the same amount of loop diuretic if you already have a tiazide diuretic. That's very important. And tiazide diuretics, what, what type of tiazide diuretics do we have? Hydrochlorothiazide, for example. Metaloza, metal, uh, metolazone, these are very interesting names. And chlortalidone. So chlortalidone, metalo, metolazone. This is, the, this is uh, very hard for me. Hydrochlorothiazide. Tiazide, again, uh, exactly. So these three medications are tiazide diuretics that you can use, and and this will be dealt in hypertension uh, videos, and this will be then given with loop diuretics, which was furosemide, and always watch out with any type of diuretic that when you excrete a lot of fluid, you also excrete, you can also excrete a lot of ions. So tiazide diuretics uh, means that you can uh, get all sides of all, all sorts of electrolyte disturbances and I've dealt with that in other videos about electrolyte disturbances and this means that you need to continuously monitor check lab values of electrolytes continuously before you start the TSA, TSA or loop diuretic and regularly so the family doctor needs to continuously check the electrolyte because it can be very very dangerous because we say we say for example loop diuretics and TSA diuretics are potassium losing diuretics that means you lose a lot of potassium for example that means you get hypo 
kalemia, a low level of potassium in the blood, and that can be very dangerous. You can actually die if it gets too severe because the potassium level should be between 3.5 and 5, and, and not, 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 not less than 3.5, okay? And therefore, it's very important that you actually add other medications that I will deal with in other videos. For example, aldosterone antagonists. Aldosterone antagonists can reduce this amount of hypokalemia. And therefore, if you add an aldosterone antagonist to this, then the level will be better. Okay, good. I thank you very much for listening.